All right. It looks like our numbers are stabilizing here. So I think we've got a pretty strong showing. Um, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on where you may be in the world. Um, 大家好. Um, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us to learn about the 2024 Critical Language Scholarship Program and application. Uh, we're very excited that you're considering applying to the CLS program for next summer. Uh, the CLS program is a program of the U.S. Department of State with funding provided by the U.S. government and supported in its implementation by our, by our team at American Councils for International Education. Uh, my name is Jake Spears. Um, I'm the Chinese Language Program Officer with the Critical Language Program at American Councils. And with me today, I have Caitlin. Thank you, Jake. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Carpio. I am the Alumni Engagement Officer here with the CLS program at American Councils for International Education. We're also really excited to have a two-time CLS alumni joining us here on our call today, Shireen. So Shireen, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Shireen Yamut and I'm a CLS alumni ambassador. I'm a two times uh, CLS recipient for CLS Chinese. I did my first time in uh, TKU virtual and then I did it again in 2022 in person at the same university. Um, and I'm so excited to tell you guys about my experience and offer some advices about the application process. Great, thank you, Shireen. We're really lucky to have you here today. Um, so in this presentation, uh, we will give you an overview of the Critical Language Scholarship Chinese program, uh, the program structure for Chinese overseas institutes, uh, the benefits of participating, tips for, and tips for writing a compelling application. Uh, so we have a Q&A box. I see someone already said da jia zao. So feel free to drop any questions you have um, in there as we go along. And we will take some time at the end of the presentation uh, to answer the questions that you have provided. The CLS program is an intensive summer opportunity funded by the US government for American undergraduate and graduate students to study one of 13 languages essential to our engagement with the world. CLS scholars participate in courses and activities offered through partner institutes abroad, developing regional and cultural knowledge and forming connections with local students and instructors. Students interested in studying Chinese may apply for the CLS program through which they will study at a CLS host institute overseas, or for the CLS Spark program, which is a virtual initiative offering beginning level Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. If you are interested in learning more about the CLS Spark for Chinese initiative, we are offering an overview of it today at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And for more information, you can visit our website and our events calendar to register for that session. So you may already be familiar with the Critical Language Scholarship, but why Chinese? With 13, over a dozen Chinese language, uh, critical languages to choose from, why would you pick Chinese? Uh, well, for one, Chinese is one of the world's most widely spoken languages, with 1.3 billion, B, billion with a B, speak some people, some variety, some variant of Chinese, and approximately 800 million speakers of Mandarin Chinese, which is the most common and widely used variant. Uh, for another reason, Chinese is the official and dominant language of the People's Republic of China, uh, a country of immense global influence and importance to the United States. Chinese is also the dominant language in Taiwan, and it is a commonly used language in countries with large Chinese diasporas, such as Singapore and Malaysia. It is also one of the six official languages of the United Nations. Chinese is a gateway to a culture and civilization that has existed for thousands of years and has produced enormous quantities of art, music, literature, and archaeological treasures, while exerting significant influence over the history and culture of much of East and Southeast Asia. However, if you're more concerned with the modern era, Chinese continues to be one of the most in-demand languages amongst employers in both the public and private sectors due to its international relevance. Chinese is an invaluable career, career skill for a variety of industries, including business, technology, and government jobs. 
The CLS Chinese Institutes provide group classes on grammar and conversation, as well as a weekly one-on-one -on -one consultation with an instructor. Students will improve their reading, writing, and listening skills while placing significant emphasis on speaking. The CLS Chinese program offers instruction at the advanced beginning, intermediate, and advanced levels. This means that you must have at least one year of previous Chinese study to be eligible for the Chinese Overseas Program. When applying, you should consider the level you expect to have obtained by next June. Class placement testing takes place both pre-program via virtual testing and on-site at the onset of the program. If you are a complete beginner, we recommend that you explore our CLS Spark offering. Again, we are conducting a webinar introducing the CLS Spark program for Chinese at 4 p.m. Eastern time or three hours from now. Registration can be found on our event page, so check it out. The CLS program takes place over the course of eight weeks during the summer at overseas institutes. Students participate in the program as a member of a cohort, sharing the same schedule over the course of the program which includes 15 hours of language classes each week, cultural activities, local excursions, and one or two weekend overnight group trips. The CLS program is an intensive and highly structured study abroad program. As such, students may not have time in their schedules to participate in independent travel and should not plan to engage with research or internship opportunities. The program is academically challenging and every aspect is designed maximize language gains and the scholars immersion in the host culture. In addition to language courses, students participate in a range of immersive cultural activities. This past summer, CLS Chinese students learned how to play Chinese chess and also got to witness a traditional Chinese medicine demonstration. Participants agree to a language policy that requires them to speak only in the language that they are studying. Each participant is paired with a language partner who is a local student or a member of the host community to practice speaking outside of the classroom. CLS alumni report that their language partners are often their favorite part of the program and they often become quick lifelong friends. The CLS program puts a strong focus on students getting the opportunity to connect with the local culture in their host country and to form relationships with local people. Whenever possible, the CLS program will place students with host families. As Caitlin mentioned, each participant in the CLS Chinese program is paired with the language partner. Uh, participants generally meet with their language partner for four hours a week outside of class for additional language practice. Uh, language partners are typically university age students who study at the host institute and have demonstrated an interest in intercultural communication. Uh, they speak the target language, in this case Chinese, and give students the opportunity for a peer cultural exchange. Uh, students often join language partners for different cultural events including karaoke, shopping, and exploring their surroundings. It's important to note that participants apply to a specific language, Chinese in this case, and not a location. Past CLS Chinese institutes have been held in a variety of cities in Taiwan and mainland China. Last year's programs were held in New Taipei City and Tainan, Taiwan. Sites for 2024 will be announced in the spring of 2024. Student placements are made based on a variety of factors, including previous study abroad experience, language level, college or university course schedules, and a balance of gender and institutions of origin. If you are selected for a CLS award, you will receive information about your placement shortly after notification. CLS strives to foster a deeper understanding of the host culture and community, and excursions and cultural activities are some of the ways that we build on this. Cultural excursions in the past have included a visit to Taiwan's National Palace Museum and a hike in the famous Alishan National Park. 
each excursion helps to provide students with a deeper insight into the life in the host country. Let's now take a moment to watch a short day in the life video created by one of this year's CLS Digital Ambassadors. Bear with us as we have some um, technical difficulties here. I think we'll move ahead and we can share this video, the link in the chat, and um, maybe during the Q&A portion, we can try again to, to share this video if possible. Oh, it looks like we might have it here. Day in the life of a CLS student in here we go. One. So every day I catch the bus at 7.30 and walk to 7-Eleven to get some soy milk and tea egg. Campus is so beautiful. Today we had a cute campus dog join our class and we have class from 9 to 11 with a break in between. Then I had lunch with my language partner, went back to campus to have my one-on-one -on -one session from 1 to 2. After that we had our weekly RD meeting where we discuss upcoming events and do fun bonding exercises. I went to the library to finish up some homework work and walk to a local shaved ice cream store where I had a mango ice. It was so delicious. Then a whole bunch of CLS students and language partners met up for karaoke. Karaoke is big in Taiwan and here's us singing a Chinese song together. <laughs> After that, I got dinner with my host family and had some amazing soup dumplings. And that sums up a typical day as a CLS student. Great. I'm glad we were able to get that to work. And hopefully that gave everyone an idea of what uh, a day as a CLS student might look like. Um, but what about the benefits? Uh, first and foremost, CLS program participants make significant gains in their Chinese language abilities. In just eight weeks, students complete the equivalent of two semesters of undergraduate coursework. The immersive nature of the program is the reason many alumni tell us their language fluency was at its peak after CLS. Students receive cert certification of their language gains through an ACTFL OPI certificate upon completion of their program. And while CLS participants have no service commitment to the U.S. government after completion of the program, alumni are eligible for non-competitive eligibility, or NCE, for U.S. government jobs, which makes pursuing a career in the civil service much easier if that is indeed your goal. Proficiency in a critical language, as well as cross-cultural competency, open doors for alumni seeking further academic and employment opportunities. Studying abroad can help you develop and hone skills that employers seek, such as resilience, adaptability, confidence, and a growth mindset. Alumni frequently speak of the benefit of joining a vibrant and engaged community of international exchange alumni. Fellow CLS program alumni often become a source of support when navigating career decisions or additional fellowships and scholarships post CLS. CLS alumni also become a part of the rich and diverse network of the U.S. Department of State International Exchange alumni. An application for the 2024 CLS program includes three short answer essays and a personal statement. There is no letter of recommendation required. 
However, we strongly recommend reaching out to professors and trusted resources on your campus for help with your application. Faculty and instructors might have ideas for areas of international interest in your field. A writing center, fellowship, or scholarship office, study abroad office, honors program, et cetera, may be good places to start to get some feedback on your essays. Now I'm excited to turn it over to Shireen to hear a little bit about her experience on CLS. So Shireen, can you first tell us a little bit about why you decided to apply for the CLS program and then what you thought were some of the greatest benefits of participating? Thank you, Caitlin. Um, so I started my academic career and uh, I chose international relations as my major. Uh, specifically because my end goal was to eventually work with the U.S. Department of State and become a foreign service officer. And for that, I knew I needed to build up my experiences, what I have uh, in order to be a good ambassador or diplomat for the United States. Uh, so I started small. I started with a major in international relations. And originally, my focus was going to be Europe. Uh, but then in 2019, I had the chance to go on a 10 days program to China, where I was able to visit uh, different cities there and to meet a lot of people and go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and to visit uh, embassies in China, like the Polish embassy and the French embassy. And I was able to have a lot of conversations with ambassadors there. And the moment I came back, I decided to change my focus from Europe to China and I immediately registered in a Mandarin class. And ever since I've been learning Mandarin, which was four years so far, um, when I first started, it was uh, a little bit tricky and very challenging, but I really liked it. Um, and also I wanted to, one of my languages goals in general is to be able to speak all of the UN languages, all six of them. I'm at five, so I'm missing only one. So. Um, I'm going to learn Portuguese soon. Uh, so after that, I um, I started studying more about it. All of my international relations classes were more focused on uh, the history of China, the economics of China, the politics of China. And I got myself very immersed in it. And, and then I just wanted to know more. And I wanted to kind of go back to see like to that part of the world to see what uh, more I can learn from firsthand. And I knew that any person who's learning a language would know that the only way to actually speak the language is to use it and to use it with people who actually speak the language to practice it and become better at it. So I learned about the CLS program um, way before I learned about it in when I was getting my associate degree, but I never really... Um, thought that I had a chance because I'm a first gen student. I come from a family where I my parents didn't go to college. Um, I didn't have much resources or help to know about these type of things. And I found out about it by me doing my own research. Um, and I saw it and I applied to see if, um, if I'm gonna get it. And the first time it was in 2021, when I applied, I uh, I know my, the essays are the most challenging part because you have to be authentically you when you're writing those essays. So for me specifically, um, the first time I wrote them and I showed my mentor, my mentor back then, she told me that it's a little bit too generalized. She told me to put myself more in it and to talk more about why I really want it, not what I think that people want to hear from me talking about it. So I, in my essays, uh, specifically when it came to um, being a citizen ambassador, um, trying to be a citizen diplomat, and how am I going to represent myself abroad if I do get chosen? Um, I talked about how I, from my background, I come from a different country and I came to the US and I had to learn everything, a uh, new culture and that, gave me the motivation to want to more to learn more about more cultures as well. So that was one of my motivations and being able to represent people like me abroad, uh, US citizens who come from various backgrounds was one of the things that 
I wanted to represent and I wanted to be when I was abroad. Another thing is why I chose Chinese or why do I want to improve it? Um, I know that I know for a fact that I want to be a foreign service officer and to be a good foreign service officer is to be understanding of other cultures, is to be respectful about other cultures and to also be very knowledgeable about them. And one thing about me is I believe that to genuinely learn about a culture, the first access you get to that culture through the, the language. So I wanted to learn more deeply about it and I wanted to connect better with the people that speak that language by speaking their own language, knowing that that's how I wanted to have connection with people here in the US. Um, so uh, when I was in Taiwan, uh, first time I did a virtual and even though it was virtual, um, in a way the CLS program is tailored in a way that allowed me to actually be immersed in the Taiwanese culture while being in my room at home. And that was something that I never had before, especially when everything was virtual. I still did not get that full experience except with CLS. Um, the teachers were amazing. And obviously like any person that has taken CLS would know like the language partner is one of the most crucial parts of the program that allowed me to genuinely uh, practice the language and to um, improve drastically. So I started off as um, beginning before in my time, you, used, you, you were supposed to have two years of Chinese. So this is a new thing that you have one year this time, which is good. Um, and my, le my level was still low, considering that I was studying for two years, only because I did not have the chance to actually speak with people as much. During my time, uh, the virtual uh, part of the program, I was speaking Chinese every single day. Even when I didn't have the chance to, I would speak to my language partner. I would speak with my teacher and our, and our one-on-one. Even the people in my cohort, we would have our own sessions where we were we would only speak Chinese. Now, it was a little bit more uh, challenging when I actually went to Taiwan because of the language um pledge that we did in which we were not allowed to speak we we made a pledge that we would not speak English and only Chinese and that genuinely pushed me into using the language in a way that I ended the program with advanced low and that's very much higher than I when I started the first program so it was just a, an improvement it was like a scale where I just went up since I started the first program and then with the second program, it just made me improve better and better, especially being in Taiwan. Um, so that's why like the program itself, that's why I chose to do CLS specifically, uh, even though there is a lot of other uh, programs that I'm aware of, but CLS seemed to be more structured, more strict, and it allowed me to improve my language in a way that I'm able to use it in my everyday life, especially in professional settings. Um, so rather than it being a little too personal or learning about just um, a couple of topics that are, oh, so what, what are you eating? What do you want to do? Your hobbies. I went from talking about that to talking about political issues, historical uh, events in Chinese. And that was the biggest improvement for myself whether it's academic or even professionally or even personal, uh, I believe that that's the uh, biggest achievement that CLS has granted me. Shirin, thank you so much for sharing your experience and um, you know a little bit about your journey through the CLS program. That's immensely helpful. Um, now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about how you can succeed in your application. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take this opportunity to answer uh, one of the questions that's in the chat here. Um, we accept applications from all majors at all levels of language learning. Uh, so we encourage students of all disciplines to think about how critical languages can help their careers. Successful applicants for the Critical Language Scholarship Program come from a wide range of backgrounds and are excited to represent the diversity of the United States abroad. However, the program does place emphasis on students who are prepared for the rigorous academic program and the intensive nature of the program. 
In your application, it's important to show that you can succeed on the CLS program. That includes addressing your ability to study intensively, your skills at adapting to a group program setting, and your cultural flexibility and maturity. You should show that you are motivated to pursue Chinese study and that you have a plan for how you will continue learning and using Chinese in the future. And finally, you need to make a clear connection between Chinese and your academic or professional career goals. So Shireen, I know you already talked a little bit about um, how you were able to craft your essays and how you worked with your advisor. Do you have any other tips for individuals applying for the CLS program um, and how they can craft a strong application? Yes, for sure. Uh, my number one advice that I always give anybody who asks me about the application process is that um, don't write your essays in a way that you're tailoring it for someone to read it write it authentically like you want to respond to it because the questions are to get to know you as a person and your motivation it's not about having the perfect candidate in mind you're not going to even if you had all the experiences that would make you stand out from everybody else if you do not write that in a way that shows who you truly are and your goals and motivations it's not going to really make you stand out like you think it would so even I know a lot of students that um, in my time as an alumni ambassador, I've had a lot of students reach out to me telling me that they don't have any experience. They don't think they can get it because they don't think their resume is good enough. And I've told them that majority of the time, even I've had people in my cohort who had no experiences or anything and they still got it. And it wasn't because of that. It's because of how much they showed um, their dedication to want to be a part of that and why. Like you have to really focus on what is your goal? What do you want to get from it? Um, what do you want to be in the future? And how this will truly help you in the future to apply it to whatever you're doing. Um, so that's like the number one advice that I tell everyone. And um, it's been helpful so far, I think from what the people have used it. So I hope that helps people more. Awesome. Great advice, Sharon. Um, and I, I'll especially emphasize that bit about being genuine in, in writing uh, with your own voice rather than writing an essay that you expect a reviewer might want to read. Um, so with that being said, the application for the CLS 2024 program is now open. Uh, the deadline is a little more than a month away on November 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern time, which is 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And we recommend submitting well in advance of that deadline uh, to avoid any last minute computer glitches or other issues that might prevent you from submitting. Uh, by late January, every applicant will be notified whether or not they advance to the semifinal round of selection. Uh, this notification is done by email. Uh, so make sure in your application you include a valid email address in your application. Um, and if you foresee uh, uh, graduating in May, you may want to include uh, an alternate email address as well. So those who do advance to the semifinal round can be expect to be notified in early March, uh, whether or not they've been selected for the Critical Language Scholarship Award. Students who are selected for the award will have about two weeks to either accept or decline their offer, um, at which point any declined offers will then be offered to alternate candidates. For more information about the CLS program, we invite you to stay in touch by following us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We will use these pages to share updates about the program throughout the year, and we also have a lot of different student stories and highlights. You can also reach out to us at this email, cls at americancouncils.org. So thank you again, everyone, for taking the time to join us um, this afternoon or late morning.